everybody. Welcome to episode 28 of Are We There Yet? This episode is called Dirty Movies. I'm your host, Susan Ruth. And I'm your host, Mara Edelman. And today we are three humans who are going to have the real conversations and raise the questions we all have about where is there when it comes to dating, relationships, and sex. And today we have with us Griffin Barrows. Barrows or Barrows? Barrows. Barrows. <laughs> I should have asked ahead of time. Thank you so much for being here. And Griffin works in the porn industry and is going to tell us all about the ins, the outs. That was not meant to be a pun. <laughs> and everything there is to do with the porn industry. So thank you so much for being here. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> Super. Yeah, thank you for letting me come on. This is exciting. Yeah, and uh, we've known each other quite a while because you were one of the OGs on my Hey Human podcast. Yep, that's me. God, that was like forever ago. It was, it was forever ago. And to this day, it's the most listened to episode of all my episodes. That's wild. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, I sometimes have fans who mention that they're like, oh, yeah, I heard your Hey Human podcast. But of course, I don't know, like, like, are they regular listeners to the podcast? Do they just Google my name? It, yeah. you know, so I, I don't really have context. That's really that's really funny to hear. Uh, we always end up linking things down below. So I will find that episode, Susan, and we'll link it. And also, Griffin, as we're talking, if you have any great um, resources or anything that we should link to, let me know, and we will make sure we link down below for people. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And just to to show how, how what kind of human beings <laughs> what they're into, yours being the very first most listened to, the second most listened to is the former nun. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, extremes. <laughs> <laughs> which always makes me laugh I'm like of course of course it is anyway welcome to the show thank you for being here mm-hmm. let's jump right in you are you uh, work in the porn industry uh do you want to talk about how you came into that field of work yeah um well I, I currently do like fan site videos like primarily only fans that's the biggest one do you want me to talk about the start of that or the start of like back when I did studio porn because it's been yeah. like 10 years. yeah whatever you, whatever the journey you want to take us on Sure. Okay. Um, well, um, I've been in porn generally for about 10 years now. Actually, April, like tomorrow, will be um, the actual like decade of it, which is wild. Um, and uh, what happened was, is I, um, I graduated um, from college with a liberal arts degree in English during the uh, financial crisis. And like everyone else, I was just like a barista and working like minimum wage retail for ages, like had a lot of like shitty things happen, like financially and like with student loan debts and stuff, I was just like crushed. And I just, I didn't really have a good job history. I didn't have a great degree for like making money. And like, I was in the red every month. I was like living in like a flat with like four other people. I was literally going um, and getting bread from the Panera bread dumpster for a while just to like eat. (laughs) And, um, you know, so that was, uh, that was rough. And I, uh, yeah, I just started um, getting into porn that way. I I kind of applied and just kind of like rolled with that. I I worked for a small independent studio um, at first. Um, It's called Chaos Men. And I I worked exclusively with them for a while. Um, But then I ended up meeting someone who worked for a lot of major studios um, at at a bar here in Chicago. And he, he just messaged some directors and got me in. So I ended up doing studio porn for, I guess, about like five or six years. Um... And that was um, a completely different animal to doing like the fan site video stuff, which I've been doing since about 2000, wow, 2017. So it's, yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah, yeah. What are some of the big differences between the two? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Um, well, with studio porn, um, at least, you know, when I was doing it, um, you don't, you know, you don't really get to pick your partners. You can voice a preference, but like when it comes to it, you're, you're, you're basically assigned someone and you're also assigned usually like your role, like what you're going to be doing, which is a bit, I mean, you know, if you're super flexible with everything you do and you like everything, that's great, you know, cause you can roll with it. But like, you know, if you're not in the mood to do something like a particular role, if you're not in the mood to bottom, if you're not in the mood to like get your skull fucked off the side of a bed or something, then like, you got to roll with it, you know, and that, that gets a bit taxing, I think, emotionally, especially if you can't like disassociate. Um, and then um, financially, it became more and more restrictive. I, I don't know what pay is like now, because it's been a few years of like the fan site industry as a major competitor to studio porn. Um, but at the time, like I remember once um, towards the end of my time working for studios, I was offered a scene to go um, and uh, do an oral scene in San Francisco. And they were only going to pay me $200 pre-tax. And I told them, I was like, well, like, you know, you guys are like an old studio. You guys are great. But like, I, by the time I pay for an Uber to go to the airport, pay for my food, because like you guys only serve like protein bars as food on set, like and like 
you know, like between all that and taxes, which is like 40%, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to, it's not going to be worthwhile. I could like someone could go pay me on like a cam site to so, like pee in a glass and I'm going to make more money. And that, you know, and then fan site stuff happened and like just the finances were better being able to like do what I wanted when I wanted was better. Um, and so um, it just worked more for me. And I got really lucky too. the, the timing of my intro into fan site stuff was very lucky. And um, what's the definition of fan site? I don't think I'm aware of the difference. Um, I, it's kind of like a coinage I've made uh, where it's like uh, uh, sites were like fans of um, porn stars or whomever watch videos like only fans is a big one just for fans is another um i think um fansly many vids there's a few other small ones um but like i just kind of you know pull them all together as fan sites so so it's a fan site for you and people pay to come watch you act out porn scenes which is different than the mainstream where you can just go on porn hub and watch things for right free. Got it. Thank right. you. I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's generally subscription based. Correct. It's sort of like um like uh Netflix for porn. Um you you pick like a profile, you know, and there's like tons of us now who do it. Like when I started, there was only like I think like a hundred guys doing it big time, but now there's just like thousands and thousands of of people who are um doing this. And you can like, you know, like uh you know, Alex Smith or whatever, just make up a name and like, you know, he or she will have like a site and with all their personal videos. And then you can pay like whatever the set subscription rate is to, to go and watch those on, on their profile. So yeah, Netflix for porn. <laughs> well, has it been a crunch now that there are so many people? I mean, I live in a place where it seems like every other person has an OnlyFans site. So yeah. does that yeah. hurt you as a person who's putting out content? Um, I mean, I guess there's ways to go about it. I, I don't know if I like the word like hurt because that makes it sound like there's like a like a, someone's like at fault for something. Um, and that's that's definitely not the case. Um, there was a there was attrition to pay. Um, because you could definitely tell like once the pandemic started happening and there was a lot more competition. Um, like there was a big swell when the pandemic started with income and then it tapered off once more and more people started using this as a form of income. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's definitely like a change to sort of like the topography of it. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say like, I don't treat it negatively. It's good. And, and it also, uh, silver lining, like gives you more options of people to work with. Because if the pool is small, there's only so many people you can really make videos with so many combinations. Whereas if there's just thousands and thousands of people, then that's just, you know, like however many different combos you can get. Um, and that's really, that's exciting. Now, are you primarily doing videos and or content that falls within the realm of the LGBTQ or are you everything at this point? Um, I, I kind of just do, and this is the joy of doing the fan site porn stuff is I, I just kind of sort of do what I like and um, I'm gay. So like, it's just mostly with the guys. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, some people have like um, a couple of bisexual couples have before been like, hey, do you want to do something with us? I haven't done that yet. I'm not opposed to it. It's just, you know, like it just hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, I would I, I would probably do it just to see how people would uh, who would react to that. Um, yeah. I was going to say, if you're going to pay for a job, it might as well be the parts you enjoy the most, right? Right, exactly. And I think it's mentally healthier to do, too. Um, I know if I'm um, if I'm like making my body like engage in a sexual encounter that I don't like, there's definitely like a psychic wear down on that. Um, and it, it, the more you do it, the more difficult it gets. I, I think a lot of times people who do force themselves into situations that they don't actually enjoy and have sort of like that simulacra of intimacy, I think that they end up having to cope in certain ways. And I know for me, it that was a really big deal in studio stuff. Um, and it was a lesson I had to learn in fan site um, performances as well. It's like, okay, like really like, keep it as natural as possible. Otherwise you end up getting, um, you get some emotional difficulties. We okay. talk about the disassociation. Uh, I think that's probably very common within the industry. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, porn stars get like a bad rap for, um, you know, drug use and like, uh, like a social behavior and so forth. And I do think a lot of it is because of what they do, not necessarily that people, um, who have stability issues get pulled into it. I think it's difficult. It's like, you know, people talk about like celebrities and Hollywood, like, oh, they're all crazy. It was like, well, no, they, they constantly do these roles and they have these emotionally demanding lives. It's not like crazy people become actors. It's a, it's stressful. And, and when you do sex work, if it's not 
always something that like you actually feel, um, then it can really wear you down. And I've seen a lot of people who've developed like coping issues um, that are perhaps unhealthy. Um, and um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's important to like pay attention to emotional health in this for sure, for sure. I would say that's any industry that takes an emotional toll, right? I work in the medical field and the amount of medical providers that are addicted to substances and drink too yeah. much are huge. And so um, I can't really disassociate, but I wish I could sometimes. <laughs> no, I, I wish I could do better. I know some people who are so good at like putting up that kind of like mental wall. And I, I envy that because it's like, wow, you can like just really turn it out with work and like do anything. And like, for me, it's like, I feel like I'm like, like a wilting daisy, just like, oh my God, like I'm so like in my head today, you know? So um, yeah, no, no. Some people can do it better than others for sure. What made you decide to stay in it? Cause I know, like I said, I've known you for a long time. Uh, and at one point you were talking about getting out. When I was in my twenties, it was easy to just turn it out sexually. I could have like fucked a cantaloupe when I was like 24, like it would have been like easy. Um, you know, uh, so at the, in your early twenties, it's easy to do it for money because of, you know, just how your libido is. Um, so I, I did it originally for money and then I kept doing it. Cause like, I wasn't quite sure what to do. Like the fallout from, um, you know, the financial crisis was rough and it's like, okay, now I'd, I still don't really have a great job history. Like I have all this retail, but like, I don't want to work at, you know, Target forever or Whole Foods forever. Um, and so I just kind of kept in it. I ended up trying to leave it. And I think around the time that you and I um, did our interview with Hey Human, um, I did try to, um, uh, I tried to get back into pastry because I was a pastry cook for, which was my favorite job that I had um, ever. And I really enjoyed being a pastry cook. Um, and the thing was, is it just, things just weren't working out. I, I tried to work at one place and I was going, they were going to hire me. And then a cashier at the front end of the bakery, like recognized my work and like mentioned it to the, to the gay boss. And then he, his reply is, I don't want porn stars working here. And he just sort of like tossed out my application. I, I tried working at another place, um, that like hired like a whole team of pastry cooks on salary, which was crazy. It was like, wow, salary, but whatever. I, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And then um, once we had worked there for several months and got everything going, um, the owner came in and fired everyone from the team and then hired um, people paid under the table to like run the place afterwards. Like after we had like, like finished, um, like, you know, doing tiling and, and like making the recipes and all this. And then um, there was a couple other places I tried. It just didn't work out. And so I was like, fuck, like I keep like striking out, you know, and I, I don't really have much of a fallback. Um so, you know, I just kept up with it financially. Um, and then that's when like the fan site stuff really kind of went boom. Um, like a little bit after you and I had our talk and I thought I was going to leave and try to just find something else to do. Like the money just became really good. And like, I got, as I said, I got lucky with a lot of exposure on the internet. Um, Tumblr was still pornographic at the time. And um, Twitter didn't have like their crazy algorithms to limit um, sex worker exposure. So um, it just was going really well. Um, I thought about going back and getting a master's degree, um, you know, right before the pandemic happened. And then the pandemic happened and everything was just nuts. But the income, as I said, had that big spike. Um, and so I was like, fuck, like it would be financially irresponsible to stop. Even if I'm just like jerking off in the bathroom and making videos of that, you know, just some solo stuff um, like that would still be it was just make financial sense so yeah was the spike because we had done a previous episode where we talked about with covid that the internet porn numbers went up astronomically during so is that where the spike for the income also came in because there was oh such yeah and for sure it was crazy like i think like there was a period where we in a couple months were like income doubled because like you know people in major cities were just indoors they were like they were indoors, they were like mentally just traumatized, they needed an outlet of some sort, and they had like, you know, in like porn only fans, all the fan sites, they're not that expensive for as much like time you can kill with them, you know, you know, like for $9.99 a month, you could like spend like, I don't know, like 90 hours masturbating, like that's a pretty great return on <laughs> payment during a pandemic. So yeah, that was the spike was, uh, was, was then. All uh, that lost protein. Such a shame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did, I did COVID uh, then, but then you, you keep alluding to there was a dip afterwards. What happened when there was a dip? Um, it uh, there was just I think a lot of people who who joined up. Um, because um, you know that sort of paradigm of of you know like work a, a standard regular real job, you know, and like 
you know, people were like, oh, I'll have a stable job if I find like a real job and keep doing it, whatever, whatever. But then the pandemic happened and suddenly all these people who were like working for companies or organizations who thought their jobs were stable suddenly found themselves like being paid nothing or being paid way less. And that was a lot of uncertainty. Um, and that really helped, I think, uh, promulgate the um, uh, the idea of, of, of using fan site pornography as a way to like privately make income on your own time and terms. I read a woman who had gone to law school and she was doing the thing as a lawyer and then she started an OnlyFans account and was making 140 grand a month and went, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. well, that's a huge amount of money, so. Wow, yeah, good for her. Yeah, I don't I don't really know any women in the industry, like, because I've heard, like, figures for the women in the industry and it's like, some of them are make a, like, a killing and it's, yeah, like, how can you, how can you really justify, like, how many years are you going to work as, like, like a, even like a junior at, like, a law firm, like, and make that kind of money, you know? Yeah. Like, and I mean, like, unless you're in- I am not fixing that copy machine one more time, Stephen. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. You know, and I think a lot of people felt that way. Internationally too, it really took yeah. off. Like, um, oh, for example, uh, Argentina, there's a lot of guys in like Buenos Aires who have profiles as well, like very handsome men down there too, very hung as well, it's crazy. And um, the exchange rate is super, you know, already, you know, like, because they have like, I think inflation now about 104%. Um, it makes so much sense to make money in American dollars and it's, it's your body. It's a resource that's very readily available. Um, and so the conversion rate on penis. Is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exponential by inch. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's um, yeah. So the hey. international like market for it was crazy. Like the consumers are basically, you know, America and Europe, but like performance could be anywhere. And so like in countries with depreciated, um, economies um or high inflation rates it just was again like financially sensible to uh to work on OnlyFans. so there's just like that's why now there's just a ton of people who are doing it um and even if that means like there's attrition for the highest earners like spread out among people like for a lot of people who are really struggling like 500 dollars a month is a lot of money for them and so why not you know um mm -hmm. so how that does was, it break does it break down women make more than where where does it fall women straight men homosexual men like how does it break down usually um i i don't really know women personally like I don't, i've never actually talked to them like one-on-one -on -one, like in the flesh about it but it seems to be that women can have a high potential but I don't know what it is for the lower making. I don't know if it's like a bigger wave compared to men. Cause like with gay performers, there's, you know, there's less gay sex in the world because there's fewer gay people or people who are interested in gay pornography. So I, I don't really know. I don't know what that breakdown is, but from what I've heard and seen anecdotally, like the highest earning women definitely make more money than like the highest earning men for sure. Yeah. Like the modeling world. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, yeah, right. It's like what ten times, ten to. 15. Oh, it's yeah. It's an insane disparity. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's. I'm curious, having been in as a sex worker, been in the industry for so long. Our our last episode, we discussed uh, pornography addiction and things like that. Do you ever have any of your clients or anybody come to you and say? hey, I know I'm taking in your work, but I have an issue with this. Does that ever happen? Did those lines get crossed? You mean, do they ever tell me that they feel like they're addicted to consumption? Yeah. yeah. Um, do people tell me that? No, actually, I, I um, no, I've never had people come and tell me that. Um, you know, I mean, whether it can be addicting or not, sure, like any stimuli can be, you know? Um, and that's just something to, you know, I've met a lot of people who are like, who it's like, because they just like jerk off to porn all the time they actually have a problem performing in the flesh with people which is a thing i don't know maybe as women you've realized that's a case um so you know i don't know um we talked about it a couple of weeks ago it's very much the case because people have to escalate their porn use yeah. a lot of men end up with erectile dysfunction because with the real experience they don't have all of those stimuli, stimuli. yeah yeah, well, I, I know I come at it as like a, an ex pastry cook, but like one thing I've been thinking on in the past like year, like as we've come out of the pandemic, fingers crossed, 
Um, and like people aren't just locked indoors so much and watching porn nonstop is making it sort of analogous to cake like I used to make where it's like like cake is great and everyone should enjoy it sometimes or you know multiple times a week it's super but if you eat it like for every meal of the day eventually your like cake is gonna like wear out your palate you're going to like have a hard time eating anything else like it, it'll jade you um and I think pornography is like that as well like I mean as much as um as much as like, I, I think it's a great thing and an, possibly an empowering thing in the right context, um, as far as consumption goes, like, yeah, especially if you're neglecting relationships. And I've seen that fall out too, where people just feel like, you know, like my boyfriend just only ever really watches porn. And even if we're like side by side masturbating, which is super fun when you're into, you know, other guys, like if they're watching their phone while doing that, like that's just, it's just really hard to kind of accept that. Disconnect for sure. Mutual yeah. masturbation is also in heterosexual couples super hot. But yes, as soon as you would get that like lack of intimacy and the phone and the porn, it goes yeah. down a little bit, right? Yeah, the loss of eye contact, I think, is like a big deal, like for that scenario as well. But yeah, like, you know, a broad, uh, broad scope there. I, I definitely do think that like consumption, of course, you can you can do too much. But the same thing, like when I was a when I was a baker, I'd be like, whoa, you were buying like six chocolate croissants like and you're not sharing that's like no judgment but like maybe space those out yeah. i used the same analogy a couple weeks ago with big max oh <laughs> yeah that'll work too yeah <laughs> i know some people might like hate for me for having that opinion but like you know uh yeah yeah <laughs> how did how did covid covid impact you uh just health wise and also to speak on the health stuff in your industry now maybe when you do more solo things how how is your health and well-being a, a factor in everything you do um well first of the COVID thing I did get COVID a lot like a lot of people came at me like when I was filming during that period understandably I totally get it but like I also didn't want to stop you know being paid because it's not like I had like a 401k or the government wasn't like going to give me money because I wasn't on someone else's payroll, all that. So I kept doing it. And I ended up getting COVID like four times, including like the first one in um, February, 2020. And then like every like significant variant, I ended up getting it again. Like I got uh, Delta, Omicron, and then whatever the one was in London um, at late 2020, um, beta. Um, and uh, so that sucked because I actually do get um, brain fog really badly for three months afterwards, which just is the worst. Um, I was like hitting my therapist up every week during those, those, ugh, those terrible moments. Um, as far as other stuff goes, um, I mean, yeah, it's definitely a risk. Um, for sure. It's a risk. Um, in the beginning of the fan site material, um, when there's only like a hundred or so of us major player males, like in 2017 and 2018 videoing, it was actually pretty all right. Like health wise, because so many of us had been trained by studios to test for STIs like monthly. I mean, when I worked for studios, I was sometimes getting tested my bloods, urine and throat and my ass like three times a month. Sometimes it was a yeah. lot of testing because, yeah. you know, they have these safeguards as organizations. Um, then when it came to the independent fan site stuff, we um, we ran into like a you know, the, the same practices in the beginning it was like we were, we all knew why we tested so frequently. So we would still test monthly, which was a lot, you know, um, but it was healthy. Then as more and more people joined in, especially people who had never worked for studios, they kind of like, they were still doing that whole like um, general medical advice of testing maybe every three months. But then you got into a, like a really sticky issue where like people would plan like film trips. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to like, Argentina and then go to Spain and then go to New York and then down to Miami. I'm going to film everywhere. So they would maybe not test before going because like they wouldn't want to cancel the trip. Or if they had sex with someone who later was like, oh, I have chlamydia, just continue going, you know, like, and it's like, and I get it because you've, you've put out all this money traveling and accommodations trying to make this work. And so you're going to lose a lot of money, but so it's just, it definitely got riskier, you know? um over time like and it got to a point where it's just like I think um like shortly after like there's a ton of people making videos I think it was um where was I uh I forget where I was but um I think I got exposed like, three times like once to syphilis once to chlamydia once to gonorrhea or maybe chlamydia twice and it was just like like whoa and so I just had to like take a step back and just like let everyone kind of in the pool like deal with that yeah yeah so because it like 
it's a thing. So you yeah. really got to dress frequently. <laughs> I thought Russell Brand famously on, on one of his stand-ups said, it's, you know, all um, the chlamydia and syphilis and gonorrhea, they can all, they all are they about a 10 day course of antibiotics. So if the entire world stopped fucking for 10 days, yeah. we would, or 11 <laughs> days, we would eradicate those three diseases. But do we do it? No. No, they got close to syphilis once. They, in like yeah. the 50s, I think they came super close, which would have been amazing because that's been around since, you know, Forever. Columbus. Yeah, but it's um, on a total uptick right now. So that's yeah. annoying. Um, yeah. we're seeing, I, I, I test a lot of people and we're seeing higher numbers than we've seen in, I've been doing medicine for 20 years, higher numbers than I've seen ever. Uh, on that note, what, what percentage of, of um, uh, people do you think are on PrEP? Like most? Um, I can only speak for, for gay men. Um, I don't know about heterosexual men or women, um, but I know for gay identifying men, um, almost all of them, you know, that I've worked with, um, it, uh, I'm sure like in some countries, perhaps where it's not available, there's, that's definitely like a higher risk, but like, yeah, like it, as far as like the performers I know from the U S and from the UK and from the EU, like almost everyone is on it. Um, that I know of. So but I, I, should prep, I should preface for our listeners. It's a prophylactic pill you take every day and 99% chance of not contracting HIV, even if you're sexually active with somebody who has HIV. Right. So it's, 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 a, it's a miracle drug. It's a miracle <laughs> it's a game drug. changer for sure. Game changer. Game yeah. changer. Like everybody should be on it. If they're yeah. having any level of high, I've had, I've yeah. had prostitutes I've put on it. I have, I just think as workers. Sex yeah. work. Sorry, I still do that. I know. Sometimes my old medical brain uses the incorrect terms. I apologize. No, okay, it's okay. Work, <laughs> um, yeah, every anybody who who is having um, yeah. those levels of sex would benefit yeah. from on it. Yeah. Like, and most people don't really have side effects. Uh, occasionally, someone will, but like, I mean, when you're on it, you get your blood tested, your kidneys tested, and um, yeah, like it's it's so fantastic because like without that. Um, it's wild. Like I, when I first started doing studio porn for that small studio way back when we, we got tested frequently, but that was before prep was really accessible to everyone. Um, it was like right on the cusp of that. And it was, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was scary. Cause like sometimes I'd be like, Oh fuck. Like I'm doing all this, this bareback porn for scenes and like, sure. People are testing beforehand, but like, there's ways to get around that, yeah. you know? Um, and it was just like, just kind of knowing that like it's, it, it yeah, it was scary. Um, you know, but everything else um, is currently, you know, for now, um, treatable. Um, I guess herpes isn't, but, you know, like that's, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but at this point, something. probably every two and four people either already have it or don't know they have it. And right. it is. Is it, yeah. that, is it that much now? Wow. Used, yeah, I want to say it is because it used to be like one out of every four. And then it was, my, it's a lot. Yeah, I'd have to look at yeah. the numbers again. But so many people do or don't even know they have it and then have an outbreak later down the road. Yeah. So, no. I mean, it's not that it's not a non-issue. It should be a conversation when you start dating somebody or if you're going to have sex scenes with somebody, I'm assuming you guys have the conversation. You, we do. We do. I have caught a few people who've tried to like go even with having like a cold sore. Like, I mean, one time I was filming with someone and like he didn't mention it. And then he just happened to like open his mouth and I was standing above him. And I just had to like push <sighs> him by the shoulder and I was like, hey, and then he was like, oh, I didn't have, have any, I didn't even realize it was there. Like, and I was like, mm, no, those hurt. Like you, yeah. you did know. Yeah. So um, that doesn't happen frequently, thank God. But um, a couple of times it's happened and I've had to like, be like, this isn't, this isn't going to, we're not, we're not doing anything, you know? Um, and I don't, I'm not like shaming people for like getting cold source. I fucking get them and it sucks. Um but like to lie about it and like, just yeah. like it's not a thing because you want like mm. the pain and you want the money like that's yeah really that's game. taking other people's lives and that's yeah that's not yeah. okay exactly i'm curious what your thoughts are on ai and also sex robots huh. um i think that um as far as uh, easy one first, sex robots, I think um, I don't really view them as like a challenge or whatever. I think it's interesting, um, the idea. And I, I definitely know people have kind of like a fetish for it, like a, like a sexual drive specifically for the robot aspect. And, you know, kudos to them. Like, like this is a brand new, exciting world on the horizon. Um, but as far as like, a, if you mean like competition, like not really. I don't think that's- No, like, I just meant intellectually what you thought oh. about it. Yeah. 
Um, I think of them as just really like, I guess, complicated flesh jacks, you know, um, or like that, that Venus machine, the automatic, you know, dick stroker um, or a vibrator, you know, like it's, it's just that in a different format and more evolved. Like, I don't like, uh, I have no condemnation for people to do it. I don't think they're like all incels or whatever, like, um, but I also don't. I think... would have a sex robot. <laughs> right. Are you kidding like... me? That sounds dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it would ever replace like humans though I, I think it would be analogous to having like um like starbucks the reason they could make that all automated they don't because there's a part of humanity that just always wants like someone to serve them coffee and same thing with sex there's like as long as you know that it's a robot like no matter how finessed it is like you'll always just want that that human core um, but as an interim like if it could rub my shoulder knot right now and then go outside oh, yeah, sure. and i can then go out <laughs> for the night like i mean as a as a as a stock gap it doesn't sound horrible no 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 as a no it, it, it's you know like i i have like several flesh jacks that are really nice when you don't like you don't want to like just do regular masturbation but you also don't want to like have to like see who's around or whatever like it's just like it's nice to have like a like a go between a stop gap yeah, yeah are you in a current relationship I am not no no <laughs> still single it's uh, fun now you say it you say it like you'd like to be is there any part of your industry that makes it harder to get into relationship uh, yes yes um there's some benefit firstly like the benefit of people who are immediately like treat you with disgust that's a good heuristic to know that like oh you're probably horrible in other ways too you're probably just rude and short-sighted um, there are, though, cogent reasons, I think, why it's difficult for people. And I've seen them expressed in other people's relationships where it's um, it can be difficult because like, jealousy is a thing that happens. And even people are, who are in polyamorous relationships know that jealousy is a natural thing and you deal with it as healthily as possible. Um, like it's difficult whenever um, like if someone were to start dating me, like they might at first be like, OK, like I'm fine with you doing porn and all. But then eventually it's like. Their friends be like, oh, I was watching your boyfriend have sex with all these hot people, you know, or like, oh, your boyfriend's so much hotter than you, or like, why are you with him? He's disgusting. And like, eventually that stuff can wear you down. And I've seen that happen to other people and it's, it can be challenging. Um, so there's like insecurity that's built into that. There's an issue of people trying to like, you know, like get to your partner to get to you or whatever. Like there definitely are difficulties. Also, if you travel a lot for the fan site stuff or studio porn, like that can be difficult, like any job that requires traveling. Um, also like health exposure, you know, like I like the one boyfriend I had for a month, um, that was his big issue. It was just like, inevitably you know i will get chlamydia again and um what does that mean for him does it mean he just has to like masturbate on the other side of the bed for the next two weeks while i'm being treated you know 10 days 10 days, 10 days. <laughs> now, yeah. with, with chlamydia you just you, you can do it's actually it's now seven days of doxycycline is recommended but they it used to be the two uh, uh two pills two pills <laughs> and done but yeah no super you are supposed to wait a couple weeks before you get rid of the condom. So I see what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> right, right. So there, there definitely are some difficulties and I do understand um, a good number of them. Um, so it just depends on like the objections. If it's a moral disgust, I think that's a stupid reason. But if it's like a logistical, um, a logistical barrier or if it's just like, this makes me, you know, this is a, a, a possible gateway to an inferiority, um, triggering um that that's that's understandable I do I do get that quite I hear all of that but I guess I would just say that you know there's so many people now in polyamorous relationships where they have to practice compersion and all of these things and sure. you still have to worry about all the STI infections and so uh you're adorable and intelligent and I hope that you find somebody who can see past all of that Thank because you. Everybody else, in the, again, in the polyamorous relationships have all many similar, except for watching it, their partner on film, mm. right? Would probably be the only issue that they're not also dealing with. Oh, yeah. I made a tape when I was in college with my boyfriend. So even I've been in the industry for an hour. <laughs> yes, there we go. That's great. Delicious, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it's, uh, it's, it's it, like I said before, it can be empowering. Like it can feel good to like, show yourself off like that i think there's kind of an almost i would argue there's the potential for like an innate human drive to like show off one's sexual prowess um yeah that's um that's an interesting bit uh but um i i do want to say like my, my being single isn't like just like everyone else has a problem with me like i i admit that i actually am quite um i'm 
I, I'm difficult to date. I think I, I have a hard time like making connection and chemistry with people. It's a, it's a thing we talk about in therapy a lot. Um, I, that's just a thing with me. It's really tough. Like I like a lot of people. I get on with people really quite well, I'd say, but as far as like romantic chemistry, it only has happened like a few times before. And so like, that's, that's the much bigger deal for me, I think, than actually what I've done is for like work. Um, sure. We no. did a whole episode on attachment styles. You possibly have a bit of an avoidant attachment style. I don't know what that is. I'm going to send you the link. Sorry, sure. now I'm, now I'm all trying to set you up. This is not what we're here for today. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, people that have a harder time connecting, sometimes it's because we're all afraid of abandonment and people can either be anxious or avoidant. And either way, it makes it hard to connect sometimes because you're so scared of if you do that it could mm. blow up in your face. Maybe just, yeah. Now, I, thing. of course, last time we interviewed, suggested that your that your dream can merge with being a, a pastry chef and naked. Like <laughs> and people would watch that show. I, I have thought about doing like thirsty thought baking before, like in a, like yeah. a Marlon Brando tank top or something. Like the thing is, is honestly, the thing that, that really is kind of like a barrier for me is I'm I'm actually not really great at videoing myself, like doing anything else, like, like setting up like cameras and lighting. Cause there's tons of people who use like TikTok and YouTube and Twitter to like them cooking, you know, like, oh, you know, like here's my Chilean dish that I love. And like, they just like, they go through it and they know how to light it and stage it. I don't know how to do that. I don't, I don't know cameras beside my phone, you know, like, um, and I don't, I'm not a consumer of like YouTube videos and TikTok. I don't even have an account. Like, it's um the so it's irony of that is hilarious yeah i actually I, I don't yeah i don't like social media or like videoing myself doing stuff i'm actually a terrible actor i'm like i'm super terrible at like regular acting and i get really bad stage fright and like like this already makes me a little bit nervous um like if i hadn't already met susan this would have been like really tough you for can't me can't tell at uh -huh. all if that helps you. you're at doing all. great at all i appreciate that yeah. but uh yeah, so like all the other stuff that like makes, you know, non-porn people like successful at like that lifestyle video stuff, like I, I just don't know how to, and like, I feel like awkward doing it. That's why I haven't done it, you know? Yeah. Besides, if you're doing great with what you're doing, then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. then, why, then why change it, right? Do you yeah. think that the, your future, you're going to just keep on going down the road and see what happens? Do you have an idea of, of where you want to if you're still going to be in the business five, 10 years, do you, or do you think about that stuff? I picture oh. you with that, your own bookstore for some reason. Oh. <laughs> I, I, did, I worked You read because you read so much. You're a huge, no, huge reader. That's, that's one of the best things about the job. Like before, like whenever people from like financial websites and whatever have, have tried to interview me, like one thing they ask is like, what's the best thing about it? And, um, almost invariably I'm like well it's just the reading you know like I have I get to like read as much as I want when I want it's super like I, I it helps me grow as an individual so much and I I'm really grateful for that so much are um, you saying that the hours are such that because I'm all pouty over here now because every day I have piles of books that I can't get to so you're saying that the hours are such that it allows you to do that what kind of hours are we talking weekly generally for well I mean uh, like it, it is it does vary um uh, but i have actually been filming like less recently i suppose back to susan's question of the future um like i, ha I have been filming less at my height i was doing like nine videos a month eight or nine videos a month which is a which is a lot a lot a lot when you throw in gym and editing and just networking like it, it was a lot um now i'm doing quite a bit less um i i, I will admit um just because again it's been 10 years and i i do think about the future as well and you know, as I'm like getting older and my, I'm not on testosterone or anything. So my libido is like naturally like more sedate. Like, again, I'm not fucking cantaloupes. So, you know, like, <laughs> I like it's that. just, that's just middle, middle age is coming. <laughs> um, I do think about the future though. Um, I have actually thought about going back to school. Um, that's something I've talked about with uh, a couple older people, older, like regular professional people in my life. Um, and my therapist, I've been like, like, maybe this is because like the mental challenge and like finding something else. I've, but exactly what I don't know. I, I've thought about getting into writing, like trying to. Um, I'm trying to work on a memoir now for the ten years of Griffin. So we'll see if anyone, if I want, I can do it. You know, two, if anyone would actually be interested in that, that's I one. Would. Thing. I would. Oh, I would. I would love to read that. That's <laughs> you absolutely can do it. I have yeah. no doubt. 
Fingers crossed. Yeah, I've been working on that a lot. Like this past month, I've been working on that a lot and like dedicating like four to four to six hours each day working on that um, for the month of March. It was it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, and um, but it's been interesting. And I, I there's actually like I really would like to get into fiction and so forth. I, I have like short stories I want to write when I'm done with this project and see where that goes. But as far as like going back to school, I thought about maybe, you know, back to English again. I thought about psychology because I do find like humans interesting and it would be perhaps interesting to like like maybe sexual psychology. Um, I, I know someone who's a like a sexual therapist and that's interesting work and very helpful work because I feel like it's an underserved part of humanity right now. Um, and, um, yeah, so I thought about maybe going back for psychology and like, just trying to like, see if that's a good fit. Um, it but, is right. you served, but it's fascinating. So in 2019, I, I took a sexology program and I do, um, sex coaching, dating relationship, sex coaching on the side of uh, being a medical provider. But 10 years ago, when I looked, I had to look through a phone book. There was like two people in like San Francisco, very low numbers of people that did sex therapy or any kind of relationship therapy. And now the numbers are definitely higher, but you would come from such a unique perspective that I don't think it would matter that the absolutely, yeah. and you could make a cake every time. Yeah. <laughs> There's your cake or a tart. I don't, to, I don't know if you're supposed to feed the clients, but <laughs> it is an idea. It is an idea. Um, like if I had a therapist that was feeding me sweet treats versus not, I think I might tend toward the sweet treat therapist. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I um, yeah. I, uh, well, well, that's another thing too, though. Like going back into pastry, I've thought of that. The only issue with pastry is like I would be, I would definitely be like stuck in a place for like quite a while. Um, that's the one because I, I miss pastry like a fuck ton. Like I really love that job. Um, but like, do I? Could I really bring myself to like just? you know, like squat down here in Chicago, definitely for another like 15 years or so. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like maybe if I found like a place that I just really loved and didn't like want to get away from frequently, like maybe I would. Yeah. Um, but so you uh, travel a lot. Currently you travel a lot for, um, for uh, different scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I definitely do. You know, I've been like all around like the country and, and all that. Like this is like the last three months is I haven't traveled anywhere. And that has been like, that has been like the longest I've stayed put in like a while. Like one, I was working on the memoir too. I had like a, a medical thing that I had to take care of. Um, and uh, so I've just been like hunkered down here and I'm like, fuck, like I really just like need to go somewhere, you know? So hopefully next month I'll take a trip. Um, and, uh, but yeah, like I, I do like to travel a lot and I get to travel a lot. So if I was yeah. 20 years younger. You'd be talking me into porn right now. Time to read, time <laughs> to travel. I mean, you know, it is pretty great. And that's why a ton of people are doing it, I think. And it's, you know, that's really good. As long as they're doing it in a healthy and responsible and respectful way, it's it's super. It is super. One caveat that I will say is that I did get, as I said before, I did get lucky. Coming into the game now is really challenging. If you're like, I, I tell people now who have like not done anything, have no internet presence. It's like, they're like, oh, should I like do this? And I'm like, well, one, like if you have a job that you can tolerate and is like paying your bills and your loans and stuff, like maybe not because like, you're not probably going to be able to make like the same amount of money very quickly. Um, just because like, it's so much harder now to gain traction when there's so many competitors and like whenever the internet has changed so much with algorithms and censorship. Um, so like that is a caveat I want to throw. I don't want to like be like pitching and making everyone quit their jobs or whatever. <laughs> you know, there's it is difficult now. It is difficult now to start. Welcome to the sex work job fair with your host. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, I, I was having a medical thought. So it's interesting. Yeah. You said that sometimes it's harder for you to do the sex scenes that are not uh, where your brain wants to be. And yeah. there's an analogy that I was sitting in a room one day with a patient and she goes, I'm just an orchid. She said, I have to eat on time and drink enough water and exercise enough or I totally fall apart. And I went, oh my God, I'm an orchid. And yeah. then I went out to my other coworkers, a couple of doctors who I've never seen pee. And I'm like, you're a weed. And then I explained <laughs> the thing. And so yeah. it's okay if you're a little bit of an orchid. I mean, so, but then again, people in the industry that you're watching that can do all of those other things, 
they may be weeds, but they have not learned their boundaries. And eventually it still catches up with people. Eventually it does, you know, and I think self-awareness is huge to help prevent that. Then like, I love that orchid thing. I'm, I'm stealing that. That's, that's mine now. I'm taking that. Um, <laughs> My patient somewhere probably won't ever hear this, but if she does, I forget your name. Thank you for the analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Chain of, chain of influence. Yes. Um, yeah, no, a lot of people are like that. Um, I like, I think I'm increasingly perhaps getting more like that, you know, where it's like, a yeah, yeah, it's a thing. and Worn down a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, tell people how they might find you if they want to seek you out. In the oh, world. sure. Um, well, uh, my, my name is Griffin Barrows. You can, you know, Google search me or Bing me, whatever, and I'll pop up. Um, I'm currently still, my, my primary platform is OnlyFans, which is OnlyFans.com slash Griffin Barrows. Um, yeah, there's also just for fans, which is like my, it's not as popular, but it's like, so it's the secondary site, um, which is, uh, just for fans, uh, dot com slash Griffin Barrows X Twitter, Griffin Barrows X and Instagram Griffin Barrows X X. So yeah, we can probably lot. link to the Instagram. We probably can't link to the others or else YouTube shuts us down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Instagram it is then Instagram it is. But so they can hear Griffin. it and go find it. People can, you know, hear it and then. Yeah. Side. And they can also like they can also like Google search me and it pops up. I've I have Google searched myself just for curiosity's sake and like it's the videos are pretty high up. And on you're Pornhub. on Pornhub and all that stuff too. A little bit, not yeah. nothing really new on Pornhub though. Like those are they, older. Yeah, when they had their um their um oh, what is the term their their overhaul um we'll just say uh when they did that they they purged out a lot of my like actual personal content and so what's left is like older studio stuff which to be fair isn't really great i feel like some of my studio stuff was great but a lot of it was really mediocre you could tell that i wasn't like as into it as i am into like the fan site stuff for sure yeah and maybe yeah. more anxious or nervous when a when a porn person has to give a speech they just to picture everyone clothed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Are we missing any big pieces that kind of go along with being in the industry? I mean, nothing really, I, I suppose, comes to mind. I mean, for me, it is just like I've been doing it for 10 years now. It's just, it is just so natural. Like, I'm so blase about yeah. sex stuff now, too, because it's just, you know, it's just normal for me. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you guys were really thorough and fun with, with the questions. Yeah. Well, also, you're you're a regular guy. You're just a person who has a particular job that's a little bit on the on the outskirts of what people would consider the norm. But it doesn't change the fact that you know you're a great pastry chef. You're funny. You're smart. You like to read. You know, you live in Chicago. You're like a human being. It's that's it. right? you know what I mean. It's I think that there are a lot of people out there. They want to put people in especially people that do live in the fringe of societies as sex workers are often labeled. Um, yeah. Of course, we all know that they're way more commonplace than people will yeah. want to let on, but it's still considered a fringe um, that it's just a, people just getting through their day like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think that's like most people are in this because, you know, I mean, sure. Like, uh, like it can be wicked fun, but like, it is a job like otherwise like we wouldn't go through the tedious stuff of like advertising all and all that like if it was just you know for us like we would make it just for us but like it is it's it's the sharing of it is the job you know and um i mean i i definitely would say like if someone is again like getting into it you know after my whole thing about like income and all that like if someone is getting into it I, that's my biggest recommendation is like try your very best to just to do the stuff that you want to do um because that's how you have longevity that's how it's fun and that's honestly the best work like whenever i film with someone and like i know that i have like like fuck i'm really into this person kind of a feel um those tend to be the videos that are best received by other uh, by, by fans it's interesting like they somehow it clicks they somehow well, know like you said there's probably some eye contact there's connection yeah. People can feel that coming out. Two weeks ago, we talked about how the problem with a lot of mainstream porn, especially the heterosexual stuff, is it's, you know, blowjob, blowjob, women gets thrown down, jackrabbit, there's no intimacy, there's no connection. And so yeah. people can probably feel that coming through. I can feel that when I watch different porn where you can tell the people are connected. I can tell the difference. Yeah. I think truth resounds with people. When there's a truthful element to anything, people will respond. For sure, for sure. Oh, sorry. She just gave me a question based on that. Um, how often are people truthful with their families and how did your family react if that's not ah. too personal? 
Um, I don't really talk to my family. It's a whole complicated thing where we we don't we don't talk anymore. Um, it's like my family is like super religious. This I don't know if I talked about this in Hey Human. But you family, did. It's actually yeah. we we covered it quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My family is like super religious, and like they still hold out that like they believe that one day Jesus will use his magic to like make me a Christian again, and I'll go live in the world. Definitely straight, there. right? They'll definitely yeah. make you straight. Oh yeah, that's that's part of the that's part yeah. of the. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. I mean, like it is sad, like because like I see other people who like it's like, oh, I'm gonna go visit my parents, and it's like, oh, that must be kind of neat, you know, um, to not have them like tell you about Matthew six four, and um, like it must be nice, and but it's been such a long time that for me it is like it's just sort of an objective sadness. I don't I don't really dwell on it anymore. It's like I I'm not making light of people who have like disabilities or amputations but it's like if I like had like missed three fingers off my left hand you know it'd be like you know like it's they're not it's not going to come back and the relationship with my family it's not going to come back you know there's nothing I can do I'm not going to go in the closet for them I'm not going to like rip apart something of myself you know even if I stopped doing porn and became like a I don't know a bookstore owner or something there wouldn't be that relationship there because it is really about their expectations and demands versus my living truth and so, as I said, the relationship's not going to grow back. And it's something I've accepted, however difficult that is, you know, and how much I, I wish things were otherwise. It's just not the case. Uh, that sucks. But you are a wonderful person and you are beloved and loved. So, Thank you. you know, Thank if that's enough to carry you through, who knows? But it's true. No, I'm, also, I'm, very, I'm very grateful for the support that I, I have been able to find outside of that paradigm, for sure. For sure. I've been very grateful. I was about to say, sometimes our family are the people we pick. Yeah. Right. They're exactly. often better than our families in a lot of ways. No offense to families. No, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And I've seen that with other people's lives too. You know, it's, it, it is a truism. You know, it's a hard thing to accept, but when you accept it, it's life is a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. You're the best. <laughs> Everyone, no, thank you, guys, you right? for watching. Definitely subscribe. Uh, check out Griffin's work if you are so inclined. <laughs> thank you all. Yeah, and thank you for having me. This has been really great. It's super great to see you again too. And yeah. to meet you for the first time, like half and half. <laughs> Good to meet you. All Everybody right. stay safe, stay connected, and be well. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.